best way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift inside of Pastor John. We pull on the anointing of the teacher. And Father, we ask that you even surprise him with words that come out of his mouth today, Father, from the Holy Ghost. But we thank you for this teaching he's prepared. We open our minds. Say, I open my mind. I open my heart. I open my spirit to receive the word of God. Today, that fruit be produced in my life. How much? 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, now say, God bless Pastor John. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, if you remember a few weeks ago, I shared a message talking about the real world is not as real as we tend to think it is. So I plan to show you a few examples of this as, I mean, that's just a regular floor, but it says the art teacher decided to slow down the running kids in the school. But it sure looks like you wouldn't want to run through there, right? It's just illusion. We're so in our five senses if we're basing our life off of those five senses, we're too easily confused, too easily deceived. And when we live in a world like there is today where there's a deliberate attempt at modifying reality, we need to be alert. And as long as we are focused as we say, above the line, on the things of God, on the truth of God's Word, yes. then we're all right. But if we think that how I feel means more than what, what God said about it, then we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We cannot receive what we want to receive. So, I grew up in a Christian family. I'm very blessed to have grown up in a Christian family. My dad taught Sunday school to the adults in his church. Uh, study, I saw him studying a lot. He had the big interpreter's Bible uh, set of books, uh, and uh, some of them were well worn on the on the outside covers because he was studying the Word, so he could teach the Word. Now my mother wasn't exactly a Word start studier, but you know we call Pastor Jocelyn Joyful Jocelyn. <laughs> my mother had her beat. She would make Pastor Jocelyn look grumpy. <laughs> she, she brought joy to everyone oh, everywhere she God, went. Yeah. She loved to serve people. She loved to, to you know, to bless people. She had talked to kids in church and I think it was called Aunt Pearlie's Romper Room. Her name was Pearl. Uh, so, but now and then she would espouse, you know, something spiritual. And my father would comment, well, that's the gospel according to Pearl. <laughs> Meaning, it wasn't exactly right on. But, uh, so I think I've inherited some of that from my mother because I'm writing the gospel according to John. And I'm kind of bummed out because somebody already beat me to it. Yes. <laughs> but we're going to talk about that today. So turn in your Bibles. To John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Yes. It's amazing how often I can prepare a message and then Kathy comes up with songs that are perfect for reinforcing that message 
And Pastor Jocelyn comes up, she pulls out John chapter 11 to quote from. Yeah. And she even quotes passage that's pertinent to what we're talking about today. Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. He keeps us all together. See, I had prepared an entirely different message until pastors told me that she was going to pray for people today, and I realized we didn't have time for my other message. So I pulled out a much shorter message that I actually wrote for the people back east because they said, when I'm there, I'm going to have to preach. Awesome. Um, and they do shorter messages in that church. Um, so, now, you're going to look at the other John's chapter 11. I'm going to read from my John chapter 11. Okay, so you compare what he says <clears throat> to what I say. At the end, you're going to say, well, John, you are right. I didn't hear any roaring agreement there. <clears throat> John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain nation was sick, named the United States of America. The country of Mary, Mary, the praying church, and her sister Martha, the religious church. So in my gospel, Martha and Mary represent the church in America. Right? Now, if you think writing your own gospel is easy, you got another thing coming. <laughs> because when I tried to describe Martha, and I chose calling her the religious church, well, I could have said the legalistic church, yeah. or I could have said the dead church, or I could have said uh, self-centered church. Yeah. So it's coming up with the right word isn't easy. Doesn't mean I came up with the right word, but it's the one I'm sticking with. And Mary, I said it was the praying church. I could have said the worshiping church, couldn't I? Yes. I could have said the living church. Or the Holy Ghost church. Right? Let's look at verse 2. It was Mary which worshipped the Lord in the Spirit and honored him with obedience, whose country, the USA, was sick. Verse 3, Therefore the church is sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, the nation whom thou love is sick. Churches all over America have been praying to God to heal America not just us. It's not just us. Verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now don't misinterpret this to say that he was saying God calls Lazarus or the USA to be sick. All he's saying is, what the devil meant for harm, Amen. he's going to turn around for good. Yes. Right? Yes. Amen. You know, God has this habit of calling things which be not as though they were. And he actually wants us do the same thing as a part of faith, calling things which be not as though they were. And that's where miracles come from. By us proclaiming the miracle beforehand. Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha, remember she's the religious church, and her sister Mary, the praying church, and their country, the USA. Verse 6, when Jesus had heard that America was sick, he stayed many years still in the place where he was. Verse 7, then after that he said to his disciples, let's go to the US again. 
And verse 8, his disciple Billy Graham said unto him, Master, the enemy seeks to kill you, and you want to go there again? And then Jesus responded with a parable. Verse 9, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walks in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because there's no light in him. He was speaking of himself. He was telling his disciples not to worry about going back where they're trying to kill me as long as you're with me because I'm the light. Yes. You won't stumble. Yes. If you go without me, Don't count on it. Verse 11. These things he said. And after that he said to them, Our friend the USA sleeps, but I go that I may awaken them out of sleep. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Thank you, Lord, for awakening us. Verse 12. Then, he, then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, then he's going to do fine, right? Verse 13, how be it, Jesus spoke of the nation's death, but they thought he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, the USA is dead. The USA is dead. The U.S. that our forefathers fathers created no longer exists. They created a land where all men are created equal. Right? They created a land where all men were free from governmental tyranny. All men are free to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. But the United States has de devolved into a nation that is no longer free. You have to get governmental permission to do almost anything nowadays. Right, businessmen? The Constitution and the Bill of Rights are frequently ignored. Sadly, ignored. And they've been replaced with big government. Men are no longer encouraged to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. They're encouraged to trust the government to take care of them. And this has created a nation of weak, easily offended people who are easy targets of tyrannical people who want to take control. Verse 15, Jesus said, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go there. Verse 16, then his disciple, Oral Roberts, said, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, that was not a great statement of faith. It was more a statement of desperation. He says, if they kill Jesus, we don't want to hang around. Without him, we may as well die with him. Sometimes you guys get scary. All except for Pastor Chris. Verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that the USA had lain in the grave 
for many years already. Verse 19, And many good people came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their country. I'm telling you every verse so Mike can click it for me. Verse 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house praying. Verse 21, Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my country would not have died. If Jesus had been allowed to stay in our government and our schools and our public places, America would not have died. Verse 22, Martha continues, But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. And the legalistic religious church understands that in the end, things are going to work out great. But they don't see that things are working out great right now. Give us all eyes to see, Lord. Give us all eyes to see what you are doing. Verse 23, Jesus said unto her, Your country, the USA, shall rise again. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 24, Martha said unto him, I know that the U.S. shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day, getting religious again. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes, remember what I said before? The key word today, believe believe. We must believe. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And 26, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes. Believes in that verse twice. Uh -huh. We must believe. We must believe. Yes. Verse 27. Then she said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and he's calling for you. 29. As soon as Mary, the praying church, heard that, she arose quickly yes. and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into D.C., but was in that place where Martha met him. 31, the good people who were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goes to the grave to weep there. 32, then when Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, he fell down at his feet. Mm -hmm. Remember, Martha didn't fall down at his feet. Right. She immediately started complaining to him. He said, Lord, if you had been there, my country would not have died. Yep. That's the same thing Martha said. Mm -hmm. We all understand that. We all understand that. If God had been here, America would be alive. Verse 33, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the good people also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. In verse 35, that famous verse, yes. Jesus wept. Right. 
You know, crying is a form of prayer. Verse 36, then said the good people, behold, how he loved the USA. Verse 37, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even the nation should not have died? That's the same thing Martha and Mary were saying. 38, Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, came to the grave. 39, Jesus said, open the tomb. Open the tomb. Martha said to him, Lord, by this time the USA stinks. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It has been dead for many years. Verse 40, Jesus said unto her, that I'm not unto you, that if you would believe, if you would believe, believe, if you would believe, you should see the glory of God. Yes. We must, we must, we must believe. Verse 41, then they opened the tomb in D.C., where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that you have heard me. 42, and I know that you hear me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. Verse 43, and when he thus had spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, America! Come forth. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Can you say that? Join me. America, America come, come forth. forth. Again. America, America come, come forth. forth. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Verse 44. And the nation that was dead came forth. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said to them, loose the USA and let it go. Loose the USA and let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming soon yes. to revive the U.S. Yeah. He's coming soon to revive the U.S. Yes. But in God's timetable, soon means something different from what it does to us. We always picture soon means soon. Yes. But in God's timetable, he has much to do to accomplish soon. I mean, we all know that God could clap his hands and fix everything now. But he gave, he delegated authority to his people. He delegated that authority to us, which means he has to work through us. And you know, sometimes we slow him down. You would never do that, right? <clears throat> so, If you look back in Genesis, God told Abram, when he's talking about how many descendants he was going to have, and he said, his descendants are going to end up in captivity for 400 years. Remember that? But if you look at Genesis 15, 16, Genesis 15, 16, he said the reason they're being captivity so long is in, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. What does the iniquity of the Amorites have to do with Israel being in captivity?
it turns out Israel could not have taken the promised land if the iniquity of the Amorites had not been full, so God could fully judge them right. to enable Israel to defeat them. Right. Well, God's timetable can add many, many years mm -hmm. to things that we don't obviously see why that is. But God understands. God's working. God is working. God is working. God is working. God is working. So he is waiting for the iniquity of the Am Am Amorites to be complete or to be full so Israel could defeat them. Now I see a very tight connection between the condition of the church in the United States and the condition of the country. The church has the authority to cast evil out of this country. We have the authority to cast the evil out of the country. But what do we do? We sleep. Go ahead, say, oh me. I'll say it, oh me. We the church have allowed America to slip into idolatry and greed and all forms of Satan's deceptions. Church people don't like hearing that. The blame is on us. We have allowed it. My intent is not to burn, bum you out. So I believe that God is waiting for the iniquity of America to become full. When I first wrote that, I said I believe that God is waiting for the iniquity of evil in America to become full. Take it either way you want it. 2 Timothy 3.13 but evil men, this was 2,000 years ago, Paul wrote this. But evil men and imposters will proceed from bad to worse, mm -hmm. deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. Has anyone noticed that going on lately? That's a 2,000 year old statement. It's true today. So true today. And much before that, Isaiah said, in Isaiah 5.20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Do we see that today? People who are against child sacrifice, a.k.a. abortion, are called evil because we don't care about women's rights. Not true, not true, but that's what they believe. They don't just say it politically, they believe it. They've bought the lie. Once the iniquity of America is full, God's going to send a great awakening. We've been praying for revival, for awakening for many years. There are intercessors who have prayed so fervently for revival and have burned out. They've gotten discouraged. Thinking that soon meant soon. Not believing to trust God or his timetable. You've got to remember, God has a lot to work out before he can do great miracles. He has a lot to work out. But I believe before America can be revived, God's going to have 
to revive his church. Because the condition of the U.S. is a result of the complacency of the church. Period. I said that to a pastor last night. And he said, I travel across this country and I see good Christians everywhere I go. Blocking out the fact those good Christians have allowed this country to go downhill. Maybe not even believing he has anything to do with this country going downhill. Now, in praying for revival, expecting revival, for many years, I pictured in my mind what that revival is going to look like. Let me tell you, church, that's a bad idea. God, all you're doing is trying to bind, bound God to what he's going to do. And what he's going to do is going to be much bigger than anything we can imagine. So do not picture how it's going to play out, what it's going to do. Just believe that he will do it. Believe. Key word today, believe. Not just today, it's every day. Believe. 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 Pray for revival. Pray for awakening. Pray for a great awakening. A great awakening. All right? And expect miracles. Expect miracles. Now, a few weeks ago, Billy Miller was here. And on, on that Saturday night, he, he spoke to the men. Just the men. Because, you know, women can't handle that deep stuff he teaches the men. <laughs> but he said one thing that made me sit up. He said, now don't get me wrong. we had been talking about what's going on in the country. All the mess things, you know. And he said, don't get me wrong. But all that stuff is beneath me. And I have meditated on that ever since. God has brought us up in heavenly places with Christ. All this stuff going on in this world is beneath us. That doesn't mean we ignore it, but it means we don't get caught up in it. We don't worry about it. Because we're victorious. In Him, we're victorious. There's nothing to sweat, church. There's nothing to sweat. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. And don't worry about what goes on beneath our feet. That's where the devil is, right? Beneath our feet. And thank God that he's sending revival. Thank God that he's reviving his church. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. Yes. And believe it is happening. Yes. It is happening. Woo. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor John. That is awesome. Amen. Yes. Woo, what an awesome illustration. And uh, so praise God. We need to see that happening by faith. So how appropriate now to close this service, we're going to watch this little video. Tammy, where'd you go? I just saw you. Uh, is the pizza here? Okay, this minute, this song is only four, four minutes. Okay, so let's watch this. At, I just feel like we need to after a sermon, but also, yeah, it, did you get it? That It's Michael W. Smith, and you can turn the lights off. And while Mike's doing that, Father God, we received that word from Pastor John. And uh, we also ask you, bless this pizza and this time together. Every single person, come eat. We have lots of it. but we're.